today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 things, maybe a few more, that I wish I knew before I visited Singapore. It would have made my trip so much easier, so much more enjoyable, a little bit more stress-free, and I just think having this knowledge would have made my trip overall be better. And I'm making this video because there's so many guides on things to do in Singapore and what to go and see, what to do, but I really don't feel like there's a video that shares this information. So if you're excited for today's video, if you're visiting Singapore soon, please let me know down below in the comments section. Tell me when you're going. I'm so excited for you. It's an amazing city. I just think, like I said, knowing these things beforehand is definitely going to benefit your trip. I'm currently in Bali. Also, if you don't know me, hello, hi, I'm Katie, and I love to travel and I love to share fashion. So that's what you get here in my channel. So if those two things are passions of yours, please make sure you're subscribed with the number button on. Hit the thumbs up if you're excited for today's video. Also, if you did want me to make a follow-up series of this with things I wish I knew before I came to Bali, if that maybe that's also on your bucket list, let me know. And also, if you did want to see my recommendations of things to do and see in Singapore. We had a five day trip there and we think this was more than enough to see a lot of the sites. So yeah, I'm more than happy to put together like a three or five day itinerary for you guys. If that's something, let me know again down below in the comments. So we're gonna start off where it makes sense to start, which is number one, the airport. The airport is obviously very well known. It's absolutely beautiful. It's called Changi Airport or Chang Airport. Changi, Chang, I'm not really sure, but it's beautiful. It's definitely worth making sure you have some time to see the airport when you arrive and maybe just before you leave, check in a little bit early because there's so many things to see at the airport itself. There's a butterfly garden, there's absolutely gorgeous, like, it's called like the garden walls, I think. Uh, there's the amazing waterfall down the center, there's shops, there's basically a shopping center there. Uh, places to eat. It's awesome. It's one of the best airports in the world. So definitely make sure you make time for that. That wasn't actually the tip. The tip is though, when you arrive, they don't tell you this on the on the airplane. And I don't get why they don't do this, but you need a visa on arrival. So when you come in, log into the Wi-Fi. There's a barcode you need to scan. It brings up the page. But again, this is not super clear in the airport. So. It may sound obvious, but when you arrive, it just looks like a normal check-in. You normally go to this, you normally go to here. And all of a sudden you're like, where do I go? There's all these queues. I don't know what I'm doing. So log onto the Wi-Fi. And if you can't log onto the Wi-Fi, they also have iPads. So as you're leaving the departures bit, you, there comes into an opening um, and some stairs going down, some escalators going down. Go down the escalators and on the right hand side, there's iPads. So even if you can't get onto the Wi-Fi, don't stress. You can use their iPads here and you can fill in the visa on arrival. It's really, really easy to do so. And then you choose the correct line of obviously where you're from to go through. They won't let you through without this barcode. So make sure you do that before um, trying to queue because we ended up queuing, going back, trying to do the Wi-Fi, didn't work, queuing to tell them it didn't work and then finding out those iPads that we could have done it on the whole time. And it's probably gonna save us about an hour, which, you know, when you've been traveling for 13 hours, you kind of wanna save that time. My second recommendation or second thing you have to know before visiting Singapore is bring some cash with you. We didn't do this again. We're not super organized humans and something like this would have made it so much easier when we arrived because you can just grab a Grab taxi or a Gojek taxi. Um, these are two apps you can also download. I'll leave the link down below for you just for ease. Um, and you also need cash for these if you haven't already signed up to the Singapore version of them um, or linked your card with it. Because again, we couldn't get on the Wi-Fi so we couldn't organize it through the app like we planned to. But luckily enough, there is um, a grab station there. So you can go to the station or you could go outside and get a taxi. I don't think it'd be too much difference, but grab is typically well known for its good prices saving money and obviously when we're traveling it's already an expensive thing so anything to save a little of extra money is always super helpful get some singapore dollars out wherever you're from from your local post office or travel place um, and this will just make that bit so much easier because again then we had to go around the airport try and find a machine to take cash out they charge you extortionate fees to take the cash out you don't get the best exchange rate and 
you lose a bit of money. If this isn't a big issue to you, then fair enough, but this just would have been helpful for us to know that we needed a bit of cash. Because we did think, you know, it's 2023, we're going to a city, we won't need cash. You do need a bit of cash. Always handy to have a bit of cash, wherever you are, especially if you're in Bali. Okay, number three, and this was a game changer for us getting around Singapore, is you need a travel card. This you can buy, I think online, if you can, I will leave it down below. But what we did was we went to the metro station, which is the easiest thing to use, by the way. It's amazing. It's a little bit like the London Underground, but way more simple. And there's only one ticket office where you can buy this travel card. You can buy it for, I think, one, two or three days. I think we bought three days and it cost £30 each. Um, so essentially £10 a day. I didn't think that was really bad. And you could use it as much as you want, which was amazing. So we could get all over Singapore with this. Um, and to be fair, you can't really walk it. You know, like in London, when the tube stops are like one, two, and you think, oh, I could have actually walked that. You definitely need to be using some sort of transport because it's extremely humid and things are much more spread out. And again, with the travel card, you need cash to buy it. So again, we queued half an hour, waited, got to the thing. They were like, we only take cash. And we were like, oh my God, why is there no sign that says this? So you need cash to buy the travel card. So again, we had to walk around this bloody, they, you're just ready to explore, you're ready to see all the sites, and then you're walking around trying to find a cash point. And then you have to queue again for half an hour again to, <laughs> to get this travel card. So I definitely would recommend, like I said, getting some cash. So my tip number four, although it is a hot climate, um, is to actually bring a raincoat or a umbrella with you or one of those anorak overall max because if it's gonna rain, you are going to get absolutely soaked and it may last for an hour or so and you don't really want to be stuck somewhere not being able to explore or walk around or look around if you are out and about and then all of a sudden it just starts raining because that's what happened to us so we did buy some of those anorak things from one of the hawker markets um they were really cheap to be fair but again it would have saved us time and we wouldn't have had to like sit and wait in somewhere that we didn't really want to be my thing i wish i knew before i visited singapore number five is it's freaking humid. Oh my God, the humidity is something I haven't experienced before. Maybe in America, I experienced it once, but it is one of the most dry, humid heats I have ever experienced. So if you are someone who gets hot, overheats, you're not used to this, the heat, you need to wear thin clothing. You need to bring thin clothing. Do not be wearing like long, thick maxi dresses. You need the, the thinnest items you own are perfect. I also didn't really know what the like dress code kind of thing would be there because you know some cities um, or some countries it's a little bit more covered but it's absolutely fine like shorts and strappy top, easy. That's it's definitely not I have to be super covered up which was something I did think that you might have to be but it wasn't like that at all. Everyone's in sort of like summery wear but like I say just thin things. I wore on like a thin midi dress one day that was perfect. So just something like that will keep you cool because it's hot. And if you get hot, maybe like a handheld fan. <laughs> you will not be laughing when you need it. Okay, so my tip number six is you're gonna be using a lot of public toilets. Most of them are super clean, most of them are really nice, but some of them are absolutely disgusting. Um, and there was one or two that I was like, why have I not got hand sanitizer and tissues in my bag at all times? And this, I'm, I'm not even like a super anal clean person, but this is I generally think is a, like, you will be so thankful because there was one time, I'm not gonna go into details, but there was no loo roll and it was a bit of a situation. We forget these things, okay? It sounds really obvious, but this was in, I think, Little China or Little, no. In Chinatown or, or Little India, I can't remember which one. And I was just in this bathroom. And I thought, oh my God, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It was like a squatting hole in the floor. It was just so grim. But when you've got to go, you've got to go. So bring those things with you. So the seventh thing, seven, seventh thing that I wish I knew before I visited Singapore is that it's actually quite pricey. It is a city, and to eat and to drink, it's quite. So you need a little bit of money to go there. You need a little bit of money to enjoy it. I'm not saying you can't do it on a budget. You probably can. But personally, I think it's nearly up there with London prices. So just be aware and have that in mind. I thought it would be a little bit cheaper um, than London, but it wasn't. So um, 
yeah, I'm sure you can find cheaper places and obviously if you're going to eat at places like the Hawker Markets, they're super cheap. I'm someone who gets sick really, really easily. So for me, that wasn't really an option. I don't want to risk getting sick. So for me, I tend to eat in places that are clean, well recommended um, and normally probably cost a little bit more. But if you're a bit like my partner and touch wood, touch some wood, he's normally pretty lucky, although he did get sick the first week we got to Bali. Um, as I said, because he can normally eat any, sometimes it pays. I'd rather be well and have paid a little bit more for food than get sick. But I do think the Hawker markets were really cool, definitely something worth seeing. And like I said, if you want a guide or a three to five day itinerary of things to do in Singapore, please let me know down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to share that with you because I just visited last month. My tip number eight is if you're going to visit Raffles, which I'm sure you will, and get the Singapore sling because it's a bit of a experience to have in Singapore, it was kind of underwhelming, just, just to be brutally honest. Uh, but I guess it's one of those things you just wanted to take off. I didn't want to miss out on anything on our bucket list and that was one of them. So we did do it and Singapore sling is very sweet. So if you don't like sweet things, perhaps opt for something different when you're there. Um, it's also, I think like 25 pound for the cocktail, which is obscene, um, but it is what it is. We did it, we were like, it's one of those things. We'll never do it again. So we may as well do it while we're here. Um, also, Online it says it's a dress code and we were like, oh my god, do we need to dress up? Like, we don't even have heels with it. Like, I didn't have heels with me. Reese didn't have any proper shoes. I was like, oh god. Like, so we made an effort. We looked really nice anyway, um, but we were a bit worried about it. And when we got there, there were literally people in like t-shirts, shorts and trainers. And I was like, why have you not made any effort? It annoyed me a bit, but it just shows there's actually no dress code. You don't need to wear a dress code. But I do recommend dressing up to go out because why would you not? You're traveling, make a bit of effort guys, okay? But there isn't actually a serious dress code. And also the um, raffles, find raffles itself, it's not on the raffles tube, it's actually on the city hall tube stop, which we made the mistake of, ended up walking around some random place for about 25 minutes, completely lost, with no Wi-Fi, not a deal. Um, in the end, we managed to, to go to, I think, like a cafe, got some Wi-Fi and realized we were at the wrong place. So it's the city hall stop that you need to go to if you want to go to Raffles. Um, also, just be, be prepared, there is a queue to get in. It's quite long. I'm not sure how it would differ on times, but we obviously went in the evening to go for a drink and there was a queue. It was about half an hour, I think, in total to wait to get in there. Um, and as I said, it was a little bit underwhelming, but that's just my opinion, my feedback, you do you. If you wanna go and see it, be my guest. The ninth thing that I wish I knew before I visited Singapore is that it's pretty much just restaurants, cafes, shopping malls, and roads. Like, it's a city at the end of the day, but I did feel like there would be a lot more things to see and a lot more things to do there. Um, but it's very, 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 very touristy. So if touristy isn't your scene, I kind of guess we were looking for a little bit more authentic Singapore, the real Singapore, and I do think you get a bit of that if you go to the hawker market, if you go to little India, if you go to um, Chinatown, and I mean, there's some beautiful things to see there, like Gardens by the Bay was absolutely beautiful, but I did kind of want to see a bit more real. It felt a little bit like the touristy side of London. Um, so that's, again, just my feedback, but something that I guess I wish I knew before I went. And then the last thing I've got to share that I wish I knew before I visited Singapore is, it is a city, guys, so make sure you bring comfy footwear. We did so many steps, even with using the transport there, we still did so many steps. I think the first day we did 24,000 or something like that. We did decrease them as the days came on because we, we were just exhausted. We had blisters, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend bringing your comfiest pair of trainers, your comfiest pair of shoes, um, because you will be walking a lot and uncomfortable footwear is not the one. Even, you know, maybe like, we're thinking about style a bit, but just plan your outfit around the trainers because <laughs> you'll be so grateful that you took that tip on board because my feet were not thanking me at the end of that. A last little few things just to mention before we close today's video, it was the airport is absolutely massive and I didn't actually realise this but I wrote it down in my notes that it was voted number one airport in the world so that just reaffirms my number one tip that I shared with you at the start. Um, you need a lot of cash, you can use card but um, it's best just to have both. Also if you don't already have like a travel card, 
I think these are amazing to have whilst traveling because you don't have to worry about your bank or your savings or people scamming your card, you have a travel card. So the one I've been using whilst I've been in Singapore and Bali is called the Wise Card. It's so easy to use, you can top it up really easily, you can withdraw, it's super safe, you can just use it to tap, there's no fees, which is amazing. So you're not paying a fee on every single thing you charge. So even if you're just going for a holiday, I honestly recommend getting this card. Try and get it at least seven days before you go because you won't have to pay the um, £12 postage fee, you'll get free postage. And I will I have a link and a discount code down below for the Wise card as well. So please do use it, honestly. I just think it gives you peace of mind. You say you're saving money and it's just so easy to use. Um, and you don't have to like transfer money into different currencies. It just does it for you. It's amazing. So you just top it up with your currency and then you spend in the currency of the country you're in. It's the best travel card I've ever had and I've traveled a lot. So like I said, it's linked down below. Make sure you go and get one of them if you're traveling to any country this summer. And then one of the things finally that I loved was that it was just super clean. It was probably the cleanest city I've ever seen. It was immaculate, absolutely everywhere. Um, it was just beautiful and a really cool place to see. So I hope you guys do have the best time. Make sure you stay super hydrated because it is so humid. You will sweat a lot. Um, but just go enjoy and I hope you found this video super useful. If you did, hit that thumbs up, like this video, comment back below. Like I said at the start, let me know when you're going to Singapore. I'm so excited for you. And make sure you subscribe not to miss out on any of my future videos. Also, as always, if there's anything you want to see, let me know down below in the comments if you want to know anything about my Bali trip. I'm here for two months, so I'm going to have all the insights for you. Let me know. If you want to keep up to date with my daily travels, then make sure you're following over on my Instagram. The handle is exactly the same as here. It's at Katie Victoria Holland, as I share every single thing I'm up to daily over there. Travel, cafes, outfits, life everything. I hope I see you next in next week's video. Bye!